Okay, so let me get a sense of what, why you are interested in this class. What type of problems do you envision you to be able to solve after learning numerical methods for PBEs? <coughs> Let's start from uh, uh, this side of the class, please. Uh, can I get brought back to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, then let's start from the back row then. Um, hi, my name is Sterling. I'm a nuclear engineer. Um, so I want to use this class to model reactors. So I, I tend to work on multi physics reactor engineering problem. So what's the heat transfer between like heat generated in the fuel, how is it making it out to the coolant, what's the coolant doing, is the coolant boiling, how does that change our heat transfer, mechanical deformation of the rods, all that sort of stuff. Cool, nuclear engineering. So uh, it's, uh, it's actually numerical solution of PDS is very important because like how much how much you can produce with the with the reactor is basically how much heat you can bring out, right? right. I mean there is no limit in how much you can produce by nuclear reaction. But there is a limit in how much you can bring out through the heat transfer, which is, uh, it's gonna be, it can be modeled by the equations we are actually gonna be talking about in this lecture. Okay, please, next one. Hi, my name is Alan. Uh, I work in computational acoustics, so uh, I've been doing a couple of projects in Abacus. So I just wanted to understand better as to what is the underlying biodegradable process. So acoustics, uh, sound propagations. Uh, yeah, one of them is for instrument acoustics. It's a finite element model of a violin. I see. And the other is a finite element model of uh, scattering from fish. Of a? Scattering from fish. Scattering from a fish? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> OK. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So sound propagation, sound scattering, and sound generation. Cool. Please, next. Um, I'm Gordy, and I work on ion transcription membranes um, for acceleration. And uh, I wanted to take this class to you to learn more about these techniques. Um, I, I just, I think they're generally useful for any problem. I see. So ion transport, but you are interested in uh, general numerical methods for PBs. OK, cool. Hi, my name is Andrea, and I'm um, an Astro. So um, of course, it's going to be interesting for me to use the uh, numerical solutions for aerodynamics equations, uh, dynamics equations, structural mechanics, and also multidisciplinary optimization. Okay, so aerodynamics and the structural Right, right. And if you if you look at uh, uh, it's it's hard to say how many people are using each of these, but like uh, right now the biggest uh, uh, market like in, in basically high performance computing, like those people who use the most uh, CPU cycles are people doing fluid mechanics and structural mechanics, really. But there is uh, many, many other applications that are making all these, uh, uh, the rest third of these uh, CPU cycles. Okay, please. Hi, uh, I'm David, and uh, I'm an aerospace too, and I work in turbo engineering, so I'm hoping to uh, better understand what's going on sort of under the hood of the CFD that I do for bottom compressors. Okay, I understand a lot more about uh, what's under the hood of CFD, computational fluid dynamics. All right, cool. Peace. Um, I am Noe. I work in modern um, processes like erosion of atmospheres. Um, what processes? Like waves. Oh, waves, okay. Um, so I guess I'm interested in various uh, types of like, wave problems. Um, also, like how to approach nonlinear problems. How to approach nonlinear problems, right? We'll start talking about nonlinear problems in the finite volume part of this class. So, okay, please. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm working on a project where we're modeling, uh, modeling traumatic brain injury. Um, so, Trauma traumatic what injury? Brain injury? A brain injury, okay. I see. Um, so, a lot of solid mechanics, I see. Regime, propagation. So, you. you, you you'll be solving how the brain deforms. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right, I've done, uh, I do fluid mechanics, and I've done some um, fluid mechanics with elasticity, um, so I'm interested in some learning finite elements like that. So fluid mechanics with elasticity, so both solid and fluid coupled together yeah, type right. of? I see, I see, cool. Yeah. 
I am Jonas. I'm also in the Air After Department, and that's basically the explanation. Name it the aircraft design, which will be useful eventually. Okay, aircraft design. I see. Cool, cool. Yeah, next one, please. Um, Hello, I'm Luigi from the Mechanical Engineering Department. Um, I do not have a specific topic to study this out, but I'm considering this as a minor. So I'm here. Okay, okay. Because of minor. <laughs> please. Hi, my name is Sinbad. I work in Mechanical Engineering at the University of New York City. I'm doing. So I just wanted to give you a course on engineering. So okay, elasticity and fluids. Cool. Uh, I, we may not have time to actually go over the entire class, right? But uh, does anybody have anything that are kind of different from the ensemble of uh, answers that is given by the last row of people? Yes, please. Um, I'm interested in computer graphics, so like in video games or or movies, you make things like cloth or woods or squishy things simulate realistically. Mm -hmm. I see. So simulating everything that you normally see that you want to animate in uh, computer graphics, games, and movies. That's, a, that's actually a very fast, a very fast growing industry uh, that is out there. Yeah. Uh, yes? Uh, so in physics, um, sometimes the theory is not aligned with experiment, what we see in reality. Um, and it's surprising when we run experiments and we see instabilities or we see regimes that are not predicted by the theory. Um, so I'm interested in doing uh, simulations for experiments that are too expensive or too outside of the scale in which we can conduct a, on a physical level and see if we can predict these weird instabilities or regimes in which we can keep. So in astrophysics, for instance, you get a lot of instability, hydrodynamic instabilities that we can't really run experiments and see, but right. it would be great if we can kind of predict it through the simulation um, somehow and then see if you know, that tells us something about the theory. Yeah, that's actually one of the most interesting uh, applications I've seen, like is people simulating the beginning of the universe. You can't really run experiments on that. <laughs> But uh, people are able to create uh, very interesting uh, predictions about uh, the, the structure of the universe using simulations starting from the very beginning. It's very cool. Yes? Uh, you sort of mentioned this, but I do climate modeling, so I guess just long term weather mm -hmm. with a lot of uncomfortable approximations. With <laughs> many uncomfortable <laughs> approximations. Cool, cool. Yes? I'd like to learn about uh, the conservation laws, practical solution for conservation laws and discontinuities for uh, simulating hurricanes. For simulating hurricanes? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Nice. Yes? Yeah, so I'm like more into the high speed flow, so I'm here for making solvers, stuff like that, as well as long distance stuff like the radio and heat transfer. I see. So high speed flow means a uh, uh, flow that are significantly higher than speed of sound, yeah. right? So there is a lot of uh, very strong discontinuities and uh, things get very hot. So you need to solve equations that are a bit different from regular flows. All right. Cool. Yes? Um, I think I'm going to use the numerical PD for like stochastic optimization. For what? Stochastic optimization. Stochastic optimization. Um, with applications in like supply chain management and stuff. I see. Supply chain management. Cool. So that's uh, something quite different from what we usually do. But like, uh, you can see there are many applications that are some sometimes surprising, right? But like, you can have very different applications end up ended up solving the exactly the same equation. 